Hello and welcome to Unstoppable from Vision One High Performance Group. My name is Lori Moen and I'm a principal consultant at Vision One. And this podcast is for you, a business leader, business owner, someone who may perhaps feel a little bit stuck trying to navigate some kind of critical change and struggling to really realize your full potential. That's what this Unstoppable podcast is about. We have Tyler Bonahu. How you doing, Lori? I'm doing great. It's great to see you today. He is our sales and marketing associate here at Vision One High Performance Group. Then we also have Michelle Bonahu. Hello, everyone. Great to see you. Michelle is the principal, the leader, the founder of Vision One High Performance Group. She is the author of the book Unstoppable, and she has been someone that has really impacted change for a lot of leaders for myself. And it's exciting to work with her. This time we have a guest who has gone through many changes, some by choice, but then some that have been forced upon him, pulled the rug out from underneath him. And really, I think, Mike, I can say shook you to your core at some times. And you really had to dig deep, recognize who you were and figure out what is your purpose. And so I am thrilled to welcome Mike Carlsrud. Hi, Mike. Hi, how are you? And thank you for inviting me. Hey, oh, Mike. it's terrific. I was so excited when we first had the chance to talk because of your story, the story of the rug getting pulled out from under you and how did you recover? It's an interesting story and it's not a uncommon story. I think it's a pretty common story actually. And when you say to somebody, listen, I just lost my job and you just kind of go, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, it's almost like the affirmation of thoughts and prayers. But when it really happens to you, you know, the world gets really Really pulled out from underneath you. You sit back and all of a sudden you're looking at all your children, you're looking at your spouse, you're looking at your bank account, you're looking at your mortgage, you're wondering what you're going to do next. So I was a younger man, a much younger man working for Pfizer. And Pfizer is every, you know, a pharmaceutical company that everybody knows. And I was extremely successful in that environment as a sales and marketing person. I was doing so well, actually. They even enrolled me for my master's program in human resource development. So I went through the human resource development program and organization development and training, got my master's degree. They paid for all of it. It was like, oh my God, every green light you would ever want from a corporate setting to an employee going, you're doing the right stuff. Keep going. You know, this is exactly what I want you to do. And then unbeknownst to any of us, Pfizer was engaged in a merger. And so they merged with another organization called Smith Klein Beecham. It was a beautiful merger. Once it was announced, we all kind of went, well, this makes great sense. Both organizations synergistically working together. We didn't really feel like we had competing lines, actually. So we all felt safe. We all kind of thought, well, this is just going to be awesome, right? Because now we have a whole nother sales organization that's going to be covering the same territory, getting the word out, growing the market share, prices increasing, all of it. I mean, it was just like thumbs up all the way around. Well, plus they had just spent this money investing yeah. in you and your MBA. So it's yeah. like, and there was conversation about, Hey, we're going to give this guy the training and development role for all of our sales organization. And then one day I was on my way, driving the company car up to, we were all summoned, as I mentioned, to the Hilton Hotel. And I walked into that lobby and there were 20 to 30 of my fellow peers. All of them were shook. You don't want to be here. You just don't want to be here. And I went, what? I am I got a master's degree. They just paid for it. They're not going to. And sure enough, you're summoned up to room 512. Never forget that. And uh, walked in and my boss was there and some other guy that I never knew. And uh, he had a big Texas drawl. And, he, and he's the one who said, I am so sorry, but thank you for your services. You're done as of today. Wow. And I went, I'm, yeah. I'm done what? I literally kind of sat there and went, I'm done what? And he said, your services, and that's all he said, your services are no longer needed here. Kim was my boss's name. Kim will escort you to like room 514 and they'll talk about your severance package. And I just sat back and went, this can't be happening. I mean, this literally can't be happening. And back home, lovely bride, two small children, living the dream. You know, it's, uh, you know, two cars in the garage and a nice house and uh, just a life that was perfect in every way, shape, or form. The worst part about the entire thing is that I lost my identity in my business card. I was a younger guy. I was now 35 or 36 years old at the time that this happened. When I represented Pfizer and I just held out my card with the logo on it, I got carte blanche. 
people knew before I even got there that I must have been good. I must have been vetted well. I must be professional. I must have had all of the check boxes that you needed because I made it through the hiring process to carry the card that had the logo that said Pfizer. Yeah. And then all of a sudden now, you know, you look at that box of cards sitting on your desk and you're kind of go, well, these mean nothing to me anymore uh, because I'm no longer an employee. And now you're stripped down your to your own identity. And, yeah. and that is a very, very dark and lonely place particularly when you've made a career for the last eight to 10 years. So you're obviously a successful business owner. You're a Vistage chair. You lead other leaders through this. So talk to us about like, how did you get from there to here? And like, what were some of the pivotal moments in your life to be able to overcome that challenge? Yeah, I think one of the biggest aha moments I had in the entire process was doing my resume. And when I was doing my resume, leaving Pfizer and on my way to the next gig, I wrote down all of the titles. I wrote down all of the years that I was doing these different jobs. And, you know, what did I do? And it was all about the activity. And I got to the very end and I kind of went, well, this is a handsome looking resume. And this, you know, chronologically puts everything together that I ever did. And I got to the bottom, I gave it to somebody else to read, to proofread. It came back and this person looked at me and said, you have a master's degree. Why isn't that on your resume? And I went, well, because I'm so worried about all these other things. That, no, that's not who you are. Now you're this. And that uh -huh moment actually forced me to turn the resume over. That's the exercise I give now to people when they lose their job. I say, you chronologically put down everything you want on the front page because that just checks the box. But when you flip to the other side, you're going to find out who you really were and who you really are. What did it take to be successful in each one of those jobs? And when I started doing that, I discovered that fundamentally I coach people. I sold that way. When I was selling for Pfizer, it was an educational sell. When I sold for any other organization I sold, it was an educational sell. I never bought into the hardcore pressure, pressure, pressure. Mine was all about, I'm going to educate you. And through education, you'll say, well, this makes perfect sense. And I'm going to buy your product or service. But one of the things that an educational sale does is it builds relationships along the way. Foundation is trust. It's not transaction. That's so awesome. And I think the thing that I'm hearing from that that's important for the audience to hear is that you had this traumatic, unexpected change, but you found your footing and grounding. Through yeah. that, you discovered who you are, what you're meant to do in life. And that kind of became the trajectory for the rest of your life. In the book, Unstoppable, we talk a lot about having a solid foundation. So when you're going through the storms of life, you've got that solid foundation to fall back on. And we talk about Ikigai, which is a Japanese term that talks about finding the place where your gifts and skills and your passion and your vocation and your profession like all come together. And so it sounds like that was the pivotal moment for you, Mike, that you found that. So talk to us about what happened after that. First of all, now I'm newly minted with this master's degree, became a certified sales trainer in the old Xerox program. And um, and then I took all of that information. I spent an entire winter and I wrote a book and I wrote a book called Selling by Design. And that caught on and Selling by Design ended up launching into a speaking career. And that speaking career took me all across the United States, up to Canada and down to Mexico. And I taught people how to sell. So ironically, I started out as sales, got canned, put all this information together, wrote a book and started teaching, but started teaching on a very big stage versus the one-off kind of a thing. Yeah. yeah. There's but, two things that are really inspiring for me from that, Mike. Like the first thing that I heard you say is it doesn't really matter all the time what you do, as long as you're doing it based on who you are right? So you can be in sales, you can be in training, you can be in speaking if as long as you show up as a coach and a teacher, somebody else may not be a coach and a teacher and they need to show up different. And what that leads me to think about as a mama to this new arising leader here, Tyler, is that, you know, kids don't just follow in your parents' footsteps, right? Like take time early on in your career, find out who you are, because it really doesn't always matter what you do. Right. Um, so like what, what advice do you have for Tyler? being a young leader, starting his career based on all of these years of experience that you've gained. All the scars yes. that I have acquired. All your wisdom, <laughs> your wisdom and battle scars. I think there's a couple of things. According to the labor statistics that are coming out right now, Tyler, you're going to change jobs or titles 17 to 18 times before your career is over. So change is going to be something that you have to embrace. And what I've discovered in my wisdom is that you, you need to develop and pay attention to those moments in your life that strike you. And when they strike you as being, that might have been a moment that I need to hang on to, hang on to it. 
And so because we're the sum of our experiences, take note of the ones that really teach you something, good and bad. You know, when that big change comes your way, it's really the mindset that has to keep you in it. I was a freshman in college this year. I joined a fraternity at the University of Minnesota. I'm having a great time, enjoying it, 19 years old. I go up for a rebound in a pickup game, Mike, snap my leg in half. In half. Freshman year of college, I can't even walk. I don't even know what to do. I got a job, a business that is relying on me to mow lawns every single day of the week. And it was hard. What did you have to do every day when you were in bed and you wanted to cry and you want to do this or that? What did you have to do, Mike? One of the things, the truism about life is that life moves on and it doesn't care. Life does not care that you have a broken leg. Life doesn't care that I lost my job. Life doesn't care about any of our personal stories of tragedy. And you have a choice. You have a choice to either stop when bad stuff happens or you get up the following day and you go, I got to figure it out. And guess what you learn when you figure it out? You learn who you are. Michelle, you mentioned that I'm a Vistage coach and a Vistage chair. I have three groups, 45 executives. And one of the things that we talk about in Vistage is no a-hole rule. There's not a lot of room for somebody who thinks about themselves as being unfazed by life's events. Because the reality is we're all phased by life's events. It's just how do you react to it? You know, there's yeah. a great quote that was out there that somebody once said, which is the secret to success. The definition of success is getting up one more time than you're knocked down. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> and we're going to get knocked down a lot. Yeah. Getting up is hard, but once you get up and breathe in the air, you find out that there's right. always a pathway That's because so life continues to move on. Yeah. And to believe that you have the strength, we don't know the direction, but you know you as a person if you take the time. When you get knocked out, you even question whether or not you have the strength. Oh, absolutely. Right? You sometimes absolutely. need somebody to come into your life and go, all right, get out of your house. <laughs> and out of your head. <laughs> right. Yeah. And and I'll be the and I have shared with many people when I finally Thank goodness, got fired from the last radio station I was at. I could say that now because that gave me that wake up call of, wait a second, who am I and what do I want yeah. and why right. am I doing this? And so sometimes it's nice to not have to have that come out of left field, but sometimes yeah. it needs to. Right. Yeah. And I yeah, think with, so each, with each one of those moments, you get into, um, how familiar are you with Maslow's hierarchy? Oh. Absolutely. It's in the book. Yeah. So, so for the audience who may not know Maslow's hierarchy, as humans, we're all wired to ultimately be the best version of ourselves, but to also walk alongside of people to help them be the best versions of themselves. And if we're not at that place, we just don't feel fulfilled. And so that's why this episode of our podcast is so important because Mike's story is about that. Like once he found his why and who he was, and then started to walk at, alongside of other leaders to help them find their why, that. That's when you found your fulfillment. So um, I would like to actually focus on that a little bit, Mike. Ah. You, you mentioned earlier talking about you had that one person that kind of came to you and shook you up and said, this isn't who Mike is. And not only did you discover yourself by mm -hmm. having a, somebody in your life come in alongside of you and support you, but now you're doing that in the lives of other leaders. So uh, just yeah. take a moment to tell us about, you know, what is Vistage and how do you come alongside of other leaders and support them in their journey of figuring out out who they are. I will start out by saying Simon Sinek's book, Start With Why. And so mine is to empower others to live the life that they've always envisioned. And so what Vistage is all about is really taking leaders and it's really trying to create a safe environment for them to grow personally and professionally. And quite frankly, for them to have an accountability partner to help them live the life that they've always envisioned. There's that old, I think it's a Native American phrase that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. That's the close of our book, actually. So <laughs> that Vistage exact is, proverb. <laughs> this is all about that. Yep. It's all about the fact that you don't have to travel the road of leadership or life alone. Right. There are there are tribes. There are people that were that are so willing to walk alongside you if you would ask. Be vulnerable enough to say this isn't working. I'm stuck. I need to get unstuck. Help me. 
When I feel out of control in my life is when I am flat footed, when I have not taken a first step somewhere, doesn't matter the direction. And when the next first step happens, you feel empowered. You feel like you're taking control. And when you take control, you begin to, to own some things. And then life begins to have a little bit more sunshiny days than cloudy days. So Mike, just a quick question. I know you talked about the communities and how important it is to merge yourself with these. It's it's very important to say, I'm not alone. I have this people with me. Do it with people. What's some advice that you can give those people that are too shy, too scared to branch out? I mean, sometimes I feel myself in that way, right? With things with school, even going up to a study group, right? I would encourage people to ask the simple question, Whenever I asked for help, was I denied? But in my life experience, whenever I went to somebody heart in hand and said, God dang it, I just need some help, never been denied. I have a whole chapter in my book and it starts out with a quote from Brian Tracy, one of their greatest sales teachers oh, yeah. around. And Brian Tracy and all of his beautiful uh, books that he wrote had one quote that I absolutely adore, which is the world belongs to the askers. And I don't care if you're asking to a higher power or if you're asking to a spouse or you're asking to a fraternity brother or you're asking to a mentor. If you don't ask, you will never receive. I mean, I got to say, this was amazing. As a 19-year-old, a big thing that I worry about, obviously, is my career every single day, right? What's this? What's that? The biggest thing is for other people that are younger, it's so important to just know that change is inevitable and it is okay. And parents, I think it's really important to remind your kids that change just happens in life. Your job isn't going your way. Sometimes it's not even your fault, but it's so important to know that it's okay to pivot. Everybody does it and you're not a failure. You know, you don't lose your identity. And I think it's so important to just look back at what you have, what you've done, and just live by that because you are who you are. Yeah. yeah. And Tyler, to be wow. honest with you, I've been in six different industries. Mm -hmm. And the reality is the only constant thing in life is change. Yep. If you build one experience on top of another experience on top of another experience, then it's like, I have arrived. I have prepared myself for this moment. You don't know what the moment is. Never in a hundred years did I even know what Vistage was or why would I be coaching executives, but I'm here. And I'm here because I've got 30 years of pivots, you know, getting let go and getting lifted up. It's all of a sudden you go, I've arrived. Well, thank you, Mike. I'm yeah. I'm so inspired. I'm trying to think about what's my key takeaway. I mean, there's so many. <laughs> I think there's four kind of four things I heard. Number one, we all have unexpected events. And so just know that those events are going to happen and, and be prepared when you have those events to find your why, know who you are, have that solid foundation in place to weather you through the storm. And then I heard you say, you know, then just get up and we call it an unstoppable get off go. You got to just get up and start stepping forward. And then the real important thing that I heard you say that we haven't talked about in other podcasts is, you know, to find a support network, whether that's a coach or a mentor, whether that's a peer group or whether that's, you know, like at, at Vision One, we provide coaching and peer groups and then, you know, or it could be a retreat or an event, but something to kind of help you discover who you are and then to have someone or a group of people walk beside you. Because to your point, Mike, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And yeah, it's so um, much, so, it's so much more enjoyable to go together. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So I encourage the audience to find somebody to help you bring out the gold in you and to help you live it out and take those steps forward. Well, we hope that this episode really has left you inspired, maybe ready to take that first step, that one step, get off, go to face some challenge, start getting unstuck and really start to make your own desired change happen in your life, in your business, your community. You know, at Vision One High Performance, we're passionate and we are really passionate about helping business leaders, organizations, and communities in effectively navigating change, such as growing your business, buying, selling, transitioning to the next leadership, next generation of leadership, finding your next chapter of life. So we'd ask you to imagine having a team, having a team that's working beside you every step of the way, providing strategic strategic planning, fractional finance, fractional operational work, HR support, and that it's tailored for you. 
because that's what Vision One High Performance offers. So if you're interested in learning more about how we can help you get unstuck, be unstoppable, and make big changes so you can unlock your potential, check our website at visiononeperformance.com. We have unstoppable groups. We have peer groups. We have coaches. We have retreats. All of this trying to help walk alongside you to guide leaders to finding their why. And so, Mike, thank you. Thank you so much for your story. It's been a pleasure and I look forward to continuing the conversation.